Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, I want to share with you how to handle excess urination at night, okay? So let me give you a little background first. There's two conditions I'm going to talk about. One is diabetes insipidus, which is a type of diabetes which blocks a certain hormone, okay, which causes you to dump all your fluids. So this type of diabetes is a person that's craving a lot of cold water like ice water, they're just dumping tons of water, they're craving it, and it's going right through. So they're peeing a tremendous amount, okay? That's the two big symptoms with this condition right here. Because that condition blocks a hormone that is controlling the retention of urine or fluid in your body. So there's a hormone called antidiuretic hormone that's supposed to hold the water, and this condition blocks that hormone, so you dump all the fluid, okay? Thus, the relationship between diabetes and urination. Okay, there's another condition called diabetes mellitus, different situation. That's a high sugar in the blood. Okay, so high sugar in the blood. What happens? It spills over into the kidney and into your urine. And wherever the sugar goes, the water goes. So water follows sugar. Okay, so you're going to pee more with this because you're going to have more sugar in the urine. Okay, same thing with. Uh, if you're not a diabetic or whatever and you actually crave sugar and you eat sugar, you're going to hold a lot of fluid. It's water retention. So just realize that wherever the sugar goes, the water will go too. Okay? Now, there's a whole bunch of pre-diabetic states. So I'm not saying that this is just for diabetics. There is a gradient scale from hardcore diabetes all the way over here to a pre-diabetic situation. So it happens one step at a time. So many people have prediabetes and they don't even know it. And it happens uh, gradually over time. So there's a condition called um, insulin resistance. That's a prediabetic state. And that's just the problem with insulin. That person's going to eventually turn into a diabetic. So there's an insulin issue as well. So they're going to tend to have a problem with fluids in general. And I found that if you can correct that prediabetic situation, you can greatly help someone's urination problem at night, okay? So even the derivation of the word diabetes uh, comes from the word that describes urine passing out through a siphon or a tube. So it's basically, <laughs> the word even comes from too much urination just coming out of your body, which is interesting. Okay, there are six things you need to do. Number one, cut out the sugar. So you have to start reading labels. Read the labels and if it has even one gram of sugar, Try to get it to zero grams of sugar or less than one gram. That includes cutting out the fruits, the juices, the alcohol, the hidden sugars in the grains like the breads, pasta, cereal, crackers. You need to cut that out, okay? Why? Because that's going to aggravate the problem with insulin, okay? So just start cutting it out, all right? So then number two, no snacking between meals. Why? because even if they're healthy, snacking does increase insulin. What we want to do is we want to lower the insulin, okay? Because people with uh, pre-diabetic have uh, a resting insulin of five to seven times greater than a normal person, okay? No snacking. So, so if you're not snacking and you're hungry, you want to jump up to number four, which is more fat. So you want to add more fat with the meal. Fat is the only thing that will not trigger insulin too much. So it kind of keeps insulin down. So you can have brie cheese. Uh, you can have peanut butter, avocado, olives, coconut oil, some type of fatty, healthy fatty thing that will actually allow you to go longer. Because if you try to do this on a low fat diet, you're going to be craving stuff. You're going to be so hungry, you're going to need a snack. Okay? Less meals. So if you're not hungry in the morning, skip it. Skip the meal and just do two meals. One at 12 and one at seven, uh, six, six o'clock, okay? And then you just add more fat to adjust that, all right? Next one, five, more potassium foods. That would be more large vegetables, okay? We want big salads. You can eat the meat with the salad. You can have a shake with blended, like a kale shake if you want. Uh, I have videos on that, but we need more potassium. Why? Because potassium decreases the need for insulin, all right? And then lastly, more B vitamins. B vitamins also decrease the need for insulin. So actually, these two are really important. Don't get the synthetic version. Get some non-fortified nutritional yeast from the health of the store. Okay? 
or Amazon.com. Make sure it's non-fortified. Take a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. It's going to be very, very important to do this. So number one, cut out the sugar. No snacks between meals. Less meals, like two meals, maybe three, but no snacks in between. More fat with the meal. More potassium foods, vegetables, avocados. More B vitamins, okay, from nutritional yeast. If, you did, if the average diabetic or pre-diabetic did, did these things right here, you would see huge changes. These are the most important things. And you just need to try this for like two weeks and prove it to yourself that it'll work. Because if you're not getting up at night urinate, urinating, just think about what your sleep is going to be like, okay? And your energy is going to be like. Getting up every hour and the hour is a, is a nightmare. And I will guarantee that um, the people that have urination problems at night, that I, I mean, I've seen this so much, I can, I can guarantee that you're going to see a one-one relationship. They have a blood sugar issue. They're always doing something. They're eating, eating a little bit too much sugar, doing too much alcohol, snacking, grazing at night, having many, too many meals. The meals are too big. Sometimes they're doing low fat. They're not doing enough vegetables. Okay, so I hope that helped, and I will see you in the next video.